Is that how you did it with your events as well? Or like, did that take a little bit more planning? Well, both. I, I took my background of what I know and used that, but then I, yeah, it was pretty much let's go. Like I could wait, but I just, I just went, I started with, uh, I started in the literally like in a, it was an office building, but it was a common area. And we just set up chairs. It was called Free Will Dream at that time. This was back in like 2000, uh, 2013, 2014. And it was called Free Will Dream. And we had like, we would get anywhere from 10 to 20 people. Yeah, and I just, I just, I just started. I just did it. So this was before but, we but, even met. What? This was before we even met. This is before we met. Yeah, because we met in 2016. Yes, before we met, and I had I had created the program was Free Will Dream. I put I was my first client, so I put myself through the program, created all the like I built I did build the program out because I wanted to take all the knowledge I had and studied over the, over the, at that time it was you know over fifteen years of study, and I I thought let me put this into a program, and then I went and took it into like a live space. But as far as the event goes, I, I just let it rip and we made mistakes. And this is like, you've got to get help. But I, was not, I, was gonna, I wasn't going to let anything stop me. We, we went to a hotel. We were in a hotel at this time. Had everything planned. I talked to the hotel. I go there the night before. What room are we in? You're in this room. So I'm in there. I'm planning. So when we get in the next morning, we got to jump on things. So we're ready to go. The next day, the next morning... I come in and there's someone else in the room we were supposed to have using all of my stuff that I had put in there, like the whiteboard, the markers, and my event's about to start in like an hour. And these people were like in, in the middle of their meeting. Yeah. Just crazy stuff like that. And you just go, you know what? We're going to roll with it. We're going to figure it out. And mm. that's what we did. Mm. Crazy. That's beautiful. That's great. Yeah. I mean, this this has been this has been uh, such a blessing because uh it started out in omaha and then when i uh see now, now people are calling me you know i've been trying to reach out to people like for two days and now people start calling me you know but it's that's how it works you know like we're busy so it's like it's, you know why not, right why you know why why that's because we're raising the vibration. The energy is <laughs> rising. And they're like, I got to call Josias back right now. That's what happens, man. That's why, that's why that happens. <laughs> that's what happens, man. No, but that, that's a good point. And that was what uh, my episode yesterday was. I did a solo episode yesterday. And it was, about, it was about raising the vibration. I didn't specifically say those words. But I was talking about affirmations and okay. about how you know focus language physiology so yes. physiology is working out uh focus is meditation and then language is affirmations so yes. i recently i i started practicing like tonight after we're done here uh maybe around 11 or 11 30 before bed i'm gonna go out take a walk and practice affirmations when i walk and i do about 30 minutes to an hour and you, I did That's this good. three days ago. And I'll tell you, after the first night I did this, I literally, the next day, I had an opportunity to pay off all my credit card debt, which I've been putting off forever, been procrastinating on forever. I paid off my credit card debt. Then Great. today, today I figured out how to do the distribution thing because I've been having a, a problem with, the, there was an issue with the artwork, like, it wasn't accepting the file type and I gave up. It took me like a whole week. I'm like, ah. Is this an FTC you're talking about? No, this is uh this is the program that I use, like the it's like a website to okay. distribute, but the artwork EFT, not not FTC, EFT, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it was it was like it was first like the, the file type it's gotta be perfect, it's gotta be like a sp specifications, and if it doesn't recognize it or if it doesn't like abide by those then it won't accept the artwork if it doesn't accept the artwork i can't upload my music so so i'm like ah fuck this i'm just gonna i'm just gonna i'm gonna do it later you know but today i just figured it out while 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 we we're trying to get in touch like while you were, and then i had another lady call me 
uh, we're doing, she's an acting teacher. We're doing some, uh, like a coming up with a program. And then like, she called me right before you. And then I was trying to do it. I'm like, do I, do I take this call? And I'm like, ah, cause I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to upload this stuff. And then, then she called me when I'm trying to, and then, and then you text him and you're like, okay, I'll be home in a minute. And then I'm like, like if, <laughs> everything's happening at once. And, uh, yeah, but you know, that's how it, that's how I guess, I guess that's how it is. You know, we just got to roll with it. It, it, that's the feast or famine. You you want it to come in a certain way, but it, it just comes in all at once, it seems like. And I and right now, like I'm kind of there's like a cycle. I can feel this cycle unfolding where there's like at least in my area, there's this um uh, it's like this lull. Mm. And things are starting to open up, but th- there's this lull for many folks. And they feel this like nothing's moving, nothing's happening. I've done all the stuff. But there's a there's a bigger ecosystem at work just stay stay committed to your disciplines Mm. raise your vibrations find time to be still Mm. that's what you know my my whole thing is shifted josias i'm not sure if you've been following but i'm i'm focused on um, poetry mindfulness uh, experiential immersions either taking people into nature or bringing nature to them Mm. via my travels that's good man nature nature man i uh one of the things i do is uh every morning i go outside you know i go outside and i look at the trees and then i just like i enjoy the sun actually you know what that's not even it i've been going i've been going i've been leaving the house and after that because it takes me a little while to wake up. I go to the gym, I have a little workout, and then I go to the beach, and then I jump in the water, and then I meditate before before I jump in the water, I meditate for like anywhere from a minute to five minutes, and then I enjoy the nice. sun, and then I jump in the water and I enjoy the cold water on my body, and then and then I just I leave the beach and then I do whatever else I need to do that day. Are you in Florida now? Yeah, I'm back in Florida. I just got back three days ago from Omaha. I think it's so cool that you started this in Omaha. Like, that's such a great place to start. You can't forget that. Omaha. And it's always, if you're into football and you follow, if you remember uh, Eli Manning, whenever he would come up to the line, he'd go, Omaha, Omaha. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I just know know Omaha Steaks and Omaha Warren Buffett. Right. Yes. That's good stuff. And then, uh, and then the uh, Lincoln Cornhuskers. Yes, Lincoln, Nebraska Cornhuskers. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a great routine to go jump in the water in the ocean, the salt water. It's good stuff, man. Yeah, I found I found that my hair, my hair has been getting healthier, and yeah. I haven't been doing much different except jumping in the water in the morning. That's all I've been doing. Well, let me show you the photos. That's what I, when you, that's where I was. Mm. And um, for the for people that go on the video, that's what I was doing right there. Mm. I was right. But that water, I, you don't want to jump in that water. It's not, it's, <laughs> not, it's pond water. It's not the same thing as jumping in the ocean. Yeah. Although if I, I was up at Walden Pond, you know, I didn't jump in Walden Pond, but I was there last year. This month, last year, I was in, I was in a, Concord, Massachusetts. Okay. Do you know what Concord's famous for? No. Walden Pond. Do you know what Walden Pond's famous for? Mm-mm. Henry David Thoreau. Mm. If you Philosopher? have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. Poet. Now, now put the foundations underneath of them. Poet? Or is he like one of those multidiscipline guys? He He's the, he's the man that... Um, 18, I forget what year, 1840 something. He went out, he uh, took a plot of ground on Ralph Waldo Emerson's farm at the time. And it was right on Walden Pond. He built a cabin and he lived there for two years, two months, and two days. <clears throat> um, pretty much off his, the bare necessities that the, the the bare necessities of life. He whittled it down to what are the bare necessities. And he, he lived there and he wrote. And so he, he was a poet. His writings are, 
he's kind of a somebody who has got a, a balance of a, I didn't know him, but he's definitely a left brain and right brain person. I'm kind of like that. But I'm more right brained. Hmm. That like my right brain's my dominant, but my left is is developed enough because I spent 19 years in sales. Hmm. But he, his his writings are po. He he recounted his his time. It's called Walden Pond or hmm. Walden, my life in the woods. And some of the epic quotes, like, if one advances confidently in the direction of his or her dreams and dreams of life he has imagined, he will meet with unexpected success during common hours. That was his quote. Mm. So he's this prolific writer. And in Concord, he's like, you know, he's very revered up there. They, they love him. But anyway, I happened to be there last year talking about the law of attraction. I won't tell the whole story because it would take too long. But I ended up randomly meeting a guy who who was the number one birding expert in the world in the seventies. Birding like cuckoo. Yeah, like you know, bird watchers. Yeah. Which is a big deal up there. And there was the Henry David Thoreau Society's yearly meeting. He had a guy from Iceland staying in town. I told him my situation. I said I was a poet, I'm writing. Long story short, I end up staying at his house and I get invited to the Henry David Thoreau Society annual meeting. Mm. So it was it was awesome. And I made a couple connections for poems, but I got shot down. I was trying to get a poem in the Thoreau Society uh, thing. But it's a very it, it's kind of like turned into a little bit of a elitist, like you got to be in the club, which would be the opposite of what Henry David Thoreau would stand for. But as it is with any organization, anything that man gets a hold of, you know, we, we corrupt it in some way. Right. It's, but at the, right, at the, we at take the same the thing time, that was pure and we corrupt it. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, like, you know, a lot of people don't see it this way, but I, I do. You know, Gary Vee talks about, like, entrepreneurship is a lot like athleticism, where yeah. you have NBA level and then you have me that plays basketball, you know, once a month. You know what I mean? Now, you, you've you been doing poetry very consistently, but you've only been doing it for about a couple of years, right? Like two, three mm -hmm. years. So you're still like an amateur at poetry, you know, considering people who have been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years. So, you know, they might they might want to see you, you know, struggle a little bit before they put you up there. I think it was more of the... Uh... I think it was more like I wasn't a member and they have members that probably write poetry. Mm. See what I mean? Okay. So they don't just want to let some no name person, you know, uh, in there. And even if the poem was great, I don't think they would have taken it. But it was it, it was I mean, my writing has evolved, but, mm -hmm. you know, because it's 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 all an evolution. And, you know, sometimes an amateur can write something better than, uh, you know, with poetry. It's not like it's a little different because it's it's words. But mm. um Sometimes an amateur can write something better than somebody who's been writing for for many years, depending on what other disciplines they had. Mm. So, but fortunately, I've had other poems published, and I'm not, I'm not worried about it. like it's all good. It's all part of the journey, and I maybe I'll reconnect with them at some point because the, the guy Peter, he's like, you're going to say a poem here. He's like, one year you're going to be here and say a poem. I said, all right. So, but I gave him, I gifted him my book, and and it's funny because I. When I gifted him the book, or no, when, when I wrote the book, when I wrote my book Flashpoint, I put poems in there, never thinking that I was a poet. Like, mm. it never crossed my mind. So, I, and I realized I'd been writing poetry. Like, if I go dig up a journal, to, like you said, I've been writing it for two years, I, I could find a journal from 10 years ago. I, mm. I, I had things written. So, on one hand, I'm, I'm intentionally writing poetry within the past two years. On the other hand, I've kind of been writing it all along, mm. just not intentionally and not with any of the structure and the things that I know now. But it's just interesting. It's interesting how, and that's why I talk about like when you, it's like falling in love. It's like you, you wake up one day and you're like, oh my God, I'm in love. Where did that come from? And that's what poetry was. Like I wasn't, it wasn't like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be a poet. It was like, oh my God, like I wrote, I look at the things I'm writing and people are, then I started going, wait, I guess I guess I am a poet. So then I started writing more and I created these you know, these immersions now. Mm. You know? And they've just really it's been been fantastic. Mm. 
That's great. I, I've been I've been really thinking back to your previous point. You were talking about being in sales for seventeen years. Nineteen, twenty-one. Yeah, 20, 20, 21. 21 years. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. So I was thinking about this this concept recently, and it's like, you know how we know a lot of coaches, you know, or coaching yeah. people, you know, and. Yes. Uh, but a lot of these, these people, they don't make it. You know, they try to do it on the side. They can't really. Yes. And it, it, I think it all winds down to that they're not good salespeople for their own stuff, for their coaching. And then and then I started thinking, well, if you're not good at selling people that you can help them, how good are you going to be at convincing them that they're, they can do their changes that they need to make to improve their life? That's a that, that's a good that's a that's a valid point, but um, there's different ways to look at it hmm. because some coaches are are great coaches because they they are nurturing, hmm. like nurturing is their top profile. Like they they nurture people, and that and and so some people clients they need that extra nurturing, hmm. right? So in some sense, they, they, they're quote unquote selling them on, uh, on themselves, but they don't probably look at it that way. They, mm -hmm. It's just more of this organic nurturing where somebody who is a salesperson, I think is going to have more influence mm -hmm. because they were in sales. They're going to be able to influence that person to take action. Mm -hmm. So there's the nurturing, like the healing but then there's the, the salesperson who is going to be more action oriented because when you're in sales, you, you're like, you're nurturing. You might just let the moment hang, you know, the person's, but when you're in sales, you're like, you're already moving. You want to move, graduate them to the next step. You want to move them. To, all right. So now what, what are we going to do now? Right. Cause it's always, a, it's about action and progression for mm -hmm. most people. Right. But there is a place where, there's some people just need that extra nurturing and then but maybe wouldn't, just wouldn't that be therapy or mentorship instead of coaching per se? I think they, I think they overlap, but mm. yes, I think there's a, a, th a therapy would be more in the nurturing bucket, mm. but I still think as a coach, just in my experience, there's people that there's healing that needs to happen. Mm. They're trying to move forward, but you uncover like, Wow, there's something deeper going on here. They're 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 not in alignment. There's a something happening that we like needs to be uncovered. Hmm. So, but on the on the raw side to get like to answer your question, I think I think salespeople would be more influential to induce action in, in a client to influence and induce action hmm. than somebody who is struggling to present themselves influence people to to act but um but it, but in today's world you don't even need that you you can hire you can hire people mm -hmm. that's true yeah i i recently had an intervention done on me and it was about the same exact topic because i've wanted to be a coach before and i gave up on that that vision and i realized in the during the intervention that they asked me what's your level of certainty that you can convince somebody that you can help them, you know, or, or that you can actually get them to let them help you in your coaching. And then when I really thought about it in my heart, it was a zero. That you could help someone else? Or that, I, that, I, that I could make the sale, like, and make them a coaching client. It was a zero. So I, ha I had this, this negativity wow. or this negative belief within me that I could not do that. And since you know that sales is state transfer, what am I transferring? What, I, what belief am I transferring to them that there's no way I can, I can help them do this? Or there's no way. Um, I mean, I believe that I can help them with tools and strategies that I know. But in that moment in time, when I am transferring my state over to them, all they see is doubt. That's where the action comes in. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where you, as a coach, the mistakes that I have made are 
you, there's a there's a trip wire. You have to have a trip wire in your mind, and that trip wire is that person just crossed the line mm. in a good way. They've asked me for help, and that's where you got it. Your trip wire goes, Josias. It sounds like we're moving into a coaching relationship right now. Mm. Because you're asking me for some guidance, some help. Maybe I can help get something out of you. Is that right? Yeah, it sound, yeah, it sounds like that. Well, th- this is what I do for a living, and I have some like great ways for us to work together. Some I have some digital products. It depends on your budget. I have some digital things I can low investment that I can send to you. If you want to get into a one-on-one relationship, I have some great things too. You know what? What do you what are you more leaning toward? Well, I want to do one-on-one. Well, what? Okay. And then you can start having that financial discussion, but it is a difficult, it is difficult to mm. switch gears because now you're you're remember now you're the helper, the coach. Now you just put on the role of salesperson. Mm. So it's almost like now you have to. That's why it's difficult because you you're, you're literally switching roles. Mm. Now you're in sales and role right, but it shouldn't. There should be a way to integrate those where it's natural. There's just a natural progression. Hey, Josiah, here's how here's how I work with some of my best clients. They choose to get like they start with three sessions. Mm. You know, and I have a you know it's it's, it's, a, it's tricky. It's up. tricky because they might feel betrayed since that maybe they wanted to be your friend and maybe they thought you were going to help them as a friend. You know the well, so the I, yeah yes so so then the 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 tricky part of it is is to is to okay you know i'll be your friend and we can have fun and we can talk shit and we can have fun but if it comes down to coaching you like i may give you a, i may give you some free samples or free sessions and you know just so you can see like the results we can have but ultimately if you're gonna be a coachee then you have to be my client so we can separate those two things i guess and say, right. hey, whenever we're hanging out, if we're going to the beach, if we're going to have these activities, we, we can hang out like friends. We can enjoy each other's company and do that. But if we're going to step into the coaching realm where you want me to coach you and to help you improve your life, then that's my business. Right. And, and if it's a friend and, and, and let's say they don't have the money, it's very easy for you to just because you want to help you you know if you're like me you want to help them so you just go into coaching mode but that's why i always have a free digital product you know something like Josias, this is a this is a product i have it's called the journey to freedom it's you know it's it's normally 87 dollars but since we're friends i'm going to gift it to you but i'm but i need you to go through it and i'm going to ask you for a testimony since you don't have the money and I, and you know we're not in a in a kind of a coaching relationship how does that sound? Mm. Mm. So at least you have at least the way I try to look at it is that I'm gifting I'm giving them something, right? It's not like oh you don't have the money get out of here because people you know I but, but but on the flip side you know I've had people that have come into my world become my friends they want to have conversations with me they want me in their world but they're not willing to pay for it so I got to go okay wait is this a friendship or is this somebody who's just trying to take advantage of the situation. How you know, how, not, and they how may not equal be, how equal or how balanced is the value exchange basically? Like, what is the value saying. exchange here? You know, what are what are you bringing of value to the table for me to give you this much value, which I know I can bring to you? Right, and if there's a barter situation, then you just got to be clear on who's who's bringing what, and you know, so that each person knows what's going on. Yeah, anyway, this is going deeper, but yeah, I think the more clear you are in your conversation, your communication, you you have every right to have boundaries mm. in any relationship, whether it's a, you know, client, coach, brother, sister, mother, whatever. There's always an, an um there's appropriate times for boundaries mm. because we're not mind readers, we don't know, and people are wired for scarcity. Mm. So that means that most people are wired for scarcity. So that means they're always trying to get something without paying for it. Mm-hmm. This is the like big problem with the world. This is why people are poor because mm. we've been wired for scarcity. We're not wired for abundance. We're wired, get it cheap, get the sale, try to steal it, get it free. 
that's the way we're wired. So if we, if people operate from that way and then they want to hire a coach, that, that's one of the reasons why they, like, they don't have abundant mentality. Mm. They're operating out of a, a limited, you know, scarcity. Mm. You see what I mean? Because now it's like, I, I only have so much money if I hire, they don't realize, but if they invest in you, like if they hire you, they could double. And I know you've probably helped people make money and, and people you've talked to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? I got a, I got a good hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I got, I got a good little story I can give you. you uh, three minutes, right? Yeah, three minute warning. So if if you want to continue, we could we could reschedule and do another one another day. We or, can definitely uh, do another one. Yeah, Let's, yeah, we can finish this one up and then tell me your story. Um, so I went to Poland. And, well, actually, well, I was in uh, I was in in Denmark, and in Denmark, I met this Israeli guy, Naor. And this Israeli guy, he's like, hey, uh, you know, what are you doing? And I'm like, we're both into girls, right? So we're like, we're going to go out and pick up some girls. And then uh, I'm like, okay, cool. So meet me at this coffee shop. We, we went to this coffee shop and we sat down and then he gets up and, it, and he starts going after this girl. And I'm still having my coffee and I'm like, what the hell? And then, so he's over there. He comes back five minutes later and then uh, he's like, oh, man, uh, it didn't work out. But and then I'm and he's like. Next girl, next cute girl goes by. He's like, your turn. And I'm like, wait, I got to warm up. Like, let me just, you know, let me see you do another one. So he does another one. And eventually we both start doing it. And then, and then that got me into a flow. It got me into a workflow where I did it in Denmark, Very cool. then in Germany, and then in Poland. And then I meet this, these, these two guys, which, uh, they both get inspired. They saw me out by myself just out there approaching and having fun and That's making great. girls smile. And then he's like, how'd you do that? The girl's engaged. How'd you get her to smile like that and stuff like that and flirt? And then I'm like, well, I've been, I think this is all I've been doing this whole time. You know, I got momentum. That's and uh, I love it. so one of the guys, he actually, uh, I left, I came back to Florida. He actually kept doing it. And then there's two other guys that paid him. They saw him doing it and they paid him. It was like about five hundred or six hundred dollars, just he, just so he can coach them to talk to girls at the club. It just takes what is it twenty seconds of courage or something? Yeah, that's it. No, I love it, man. I, I've done that a few times. I, I I probably should do it more, but yeah, you know, because it, I've met some people. I've met some women that way. Just yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It, it's just, it's verbal skills. It's it's a challenge, you know cold calling <laughs> yeah but i think i think no, i, I should get the pro now that i'm doing this i should upgrade to pro like on get the, some sponsors man yeah get some sponsors sponsors yeah like who we'll have to talk about that next time okay <laughs> free advice <laughs> but it, it's not even that much I, I can afford it like i just never because i didn't i never really needed the pro because i never really use zoom but when i started doing these like i'm probably cut off here yeah, we're going to get caught off in like less than a minute. So, okay. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, bro. Thanks for joining me. Good chat. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the hair. I will, man. Keep the hair. I'm going to. All right. Peace. Hang loose. Hang loose, baby. Hang loose. Take a Hang. picture. A picture? A picture? Well, it's it's all on picture. We're on, we're on a picture. We're being recorded. All right, I took one, but anyway. uh, did you? Yeah, get, you, you can screenshot that. Oh, like this.